In today's video, we're going to talk about vitamin C, and specifically, I'm going to do a product review on The Ordinary's Asorbic Acid 8% plus Alpha Arbitin 2%. I'll talk about my experience with this product and how I incorporate it into my skincare routine. First things first, let's talk about what the benefits are of incorporating a vitamin C product into your skincare routine. There are many benefits actually. Vitamin C is meant to brighten skin tone. That is predominantly what people know and hear about this product. It also helps with the signs of aging, can reduce the look of dark spots, evens your skin tone and texture, and also helps the skin to produce collagen. And very important, it helps to protect your skin against free radicals and UV damage. So after hearing all that, why wouldn't you want to incorporate it into your skincare routine? As of today, in the Ordinary Skincare line, there are eight vitamin C products to choose from. Five of them are pure vitamin C products, which this one falls into that category, and three of them are vitamin C derivatives. As an ingredient, the pure form of vitamin C, ascorbic acid, is very unstable. What that means is that it can be very impacted by things like light and temperature, meaning it can go bad. That's why this is in a brown or dark bottle to help minimize the amount of light that gets to the product and that's what's really important when you're looking for a vitamin C in its pure form. If you're using any kind of ascorbic acid you want to be storing it in a cool dry place certainly not on your windowsill. Vitamin C is less stable in water solutions and that's why this is in an anhydrous state which means it's not formulated with water. So you can see here the color is white a good indication if your vitamin C has gone off is if the color changes. It does, if you can watch it roll down my skin here, it does go on oily, and that's because it's not a water-based formula. However, it does dissipate. When I apply it to my skin, I let it dry for about 30 to 60 seconds before I apply the next steps of my skincare routine. I'll explain how I use it in my skincare routine in just a moment. Always make sure because of its tendency to go bad if it's exposed to air, make sure your cap is on tightly and that if any material gets around the top of the bottle that you're cleaning it off and making sure that you're keeping it very clean, sealed very tightly, and as I said, stored in a cool dry place. I mentioned that this is a pure form of vitamin C, but The Ordinary does offer vitamin C products in a derivative format. You may be asking yourself, what does it mean to be a derivative? Derivatives are stable formulations that actually tend to be less irritating, so they can be a really good option for people with sensitive skin. Because the vitamin C is formulated in a stable way in the derivative format, it is less likely to go bad. It tends to be used in many serums and moisturizers. I will do other videos in the future in more detail on some of these products. For today, I really want to focus on this one, which is the ascorbic acid 8% plus alpha arbutin 2%. We should talk about alpha arbutin because that's an ingredient in this formulation. The Ordinary does have an alpha arbutin serum as well, which is really nice. It's alpha arbutin 2% plus HA, the HA standing for hyaluronic acid. If you're unfamiliar with the benefits of alpha arbutin, it really is a plant-derived ingredient that comes from the extract of cranberries and blueberries, amongst other things. It is used for skin lightening. It reduces the skin's pigment production and also slows down the process of pigmentation caused by UV light. So basically, it's both a prevention and a treatment measure. And that's why it's really nice that it's formulated within this vitamin C product as well. So you're getting all the benefits of the vitamin C as well as this hit of alpha arbutin as well, which can contribute even further to the brightening and lightening of your skin and reducing the look of age spots and other sun damage or aging issues that we deal with. As I said before, the derivative forms of vitamin C are really good options for people with sensitive skin. For those who want to go with a pure vitamin C serum, such as this one, this is a really good one to start with if you do have sensitive skin, and I do. The concentration at 8% is considered low, so any product in the 5 to 10% range would be considered a good starting point for a newbie to vitamin C, and you can work your way up to as high as 20 or 30%. I actually still like sticking with, with this form of vitamin C and this formulation because it works really well for my skin. Vitamin C is definitely an active ingredient, so you do have to be careful. It can cause irritation if you're using either a strength that's too high for you or if you're using other elements in your routine that are not playing nicely with this. 
In terms of contradictions with vitamin C, don't use it in the same routine as your retinols or other active ingredients, your glycolic acids, any of the AHAs or BHAs. And there's some controversy around whether you can or should use vitamin C in the same routine as niacinamide. I have very sensitive skin, so I tend to only apply one active in any routine. So if I have one active in my morning routine and one active in my evening routine, and I consider niacinamide to be an active, I do not combine vitamin C and a niacinamide serum in the same routine. However, if the moisturizer I'm using has niacinamide in it, I have no problem combining it with vitamin C. There are many that believe that niacinamide and vitamin C actually work very well together and actually enhance each other. So you really have to know your skin and what you can apply in the same routine. But in terms of other actives, do not mix them with vitamin C. Your increase of irritation will be much higher. In some cases, when you mix things together that shouldn't be in the same routine, it actually makes the product inert. It doesn't work. So one will cancel the other out. So you have to be really cautious. The Ordinary has a great website and chat room that's really focused on all of their ingredients and products, what things can and cannot be mixed with each other. I'll link that below in the description. I use this product in my morning skincare routine. I don't use it every day. I alter my skincare routines based on whatever my skin needs at that point in time. Also, I'm a skin influencer, so I'm always trying new products so that I can give you product reviews. However, I use this in my morning routine for two reasons. Primarily because I want the benefit of having this product on my skin to fight off the free radicals during the day that uh, my skin is exposed to through UV and pollution. That to me is a really big benefit for having it in your morning routine. And the second reason is I tend to use my other actives, retinol or my acid exfoliations in my nighttime routine. I don't like using those in the morning. Since I don't want to mix vitamin C with any of those actives, Actives, it makes sense that I do one in the nighttime and one in the morning. So this to me is far better suited in a morning routine, but you can use it morning or evening. Vitamin C is photosensitizing to your skin. That means your skin will be more sensitive and more prone to burning when you're in the sun. So sunscreen is an absolute must. Sunscreen is a must anyway, but if you're using retinol or vitamin C products in your skincare routines, it's even more important. So please be sure that you're adding a really good sunscreen into your morning routine. I've done a review of the Elta MD sunscreen. It's a hybrid sunscreen that you might be interested in checking out and I'll link it up here. As I said earlier, this does go on a bit oily and throughout the course of shooting this video, you can see that it's dissipated into my skin. I only use one drop of this for my entire face. Two maybe, but I find that using a little amount of it and applying it evenly all over my face makes it so that it works well under my other skincare products and definitely under makeup. I have read reviews of some people finding this product will pill under their makeup, but I think that could be because either they're using too much or depending how many other products you're layering in your skincare routine. How I use this product is I cleanse my face in the morning. If you're a subscriber to me, you already know that I only do a water cleanse in the morning. That was a big game changing thing for my skincare. I have sensitive skin and I have rosacea prone cheeks. I didn't realize that cleansing morning and night was really exacerbating that for me. So when I eliminated my morning cleanse and instead just use warm water to cleanse my face, it was such a game changer for me. So I would cleanse my face with water in the morning, use a toner if I'm going to use a toner, and I'll link a video above here to the Isentree Green Tea Fresh Toner. It's a fabulous one, especially for those of you with sensitive skin. Works well with my oily skin and helps to control the oil in my T-zone. So I would cleanse with water, then tone with that toner, and then apply my vitamin C serum. After that, I let it sink in, like I said, just because of its oily texture. Then I apply my moisturizer, then I apply my sunscreen. I've mentioned in other videos that I don't actually wear foundation, so I'm probably not the best person to speak to the pilling nature, but I do use BB cream. I would apply BB cream after my sunscreen, and I haven't had issue with this in and pilling, but I'd love to hear in the comments below if you've had that experience, if you've stuck with the product or not. 
Overall, what I've seen as a result of using vitamin C products in my skincare routines have really been the reduction of the age spots on my face, more of a brightening overall. And skincare is a marathon, not a race. This isn't a product that you apply overnight and see an instant result in the morning. I think slowly introducing it to your skincare routine, starting once or twice a week as your skin will tolerate and build up your tolerance to that. You can start with something like this, the ascorbic acid 8% and gradually increase the percentage as your skin gains more tolerance to it, then of course you're gonna gain more of the benefits over time. But for me, this has been an essential part of my skincare routine in terms of helping with the age spots on my face, overall brightening my skin, and I think the Alpha Arbutin in this formulation is really well paired and I keep going back to it. If you're interested in hearing more vitamin C product reviews, drop a comment below and let me know some of the ones you'd like me to try. I have many in my cupboard that I will review over time. However, I'm always looking to try new products as well. If you enjoy a minimalist approach to skincare, then you're probably in line with what my channel is about. Please subscribe.